The Right Stuff is the latest original series to hit Disney Plus and is the first scripted drama from National Geographic to exclusively hit the streaming service. It stars Patrick J. Adams, Colin O'Donoghue and James Lafferty and is produced by Leonardo DiCaprio. Before we get into this, don't forget to hit that like button. It does wonders in getting my content out there. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay up to date with all my content. The Right Stuff tells the story of Project Mercury, the US's first manned spaceflight program, and focuses on the Mercury 7, the seven men chosen as the first US astronauts, including Alan Shepard and John Glenn. Based on Tom Wolfe's seminal 1979 book, it charts the effects instant fame had on the lives of the men and their families. If you're a big film fan, specifically someone who likes your space dramas or historical biopics, you'll know that The Right Stuff was adapted to film way back in the early 1980s. It was a big long space epic, went for about three and a half hours, has a huge cast including the likes of Ed Harris, Sam Shepard, Scott Glenn and uh, Dennis Quaid, amongst many, many others. This was a really big, really fantastic, very famous movie. And I know a lot of people out there are wondering, if this has been done so expansively on such a large scale before, why on earth are they going back and redoing it again as a television miniseries? Well, of course, this is an eight part miniseries. It goes for eight hours in total, essentially, maybe a little bit less, but the original book is 500 pages long. It's this big, huge behemoth of a thing. I've never read it, but one can imagine that there is so much more meat to the bones of this enormous book that spans the best part of 20 years that was originally covered in the three and a half hour movie. Now the three and a half hour movie again is fantastic, but it moves at this really, really brisk pace. It does brush over a lot of stuff. It doesn't go into a lot of stuff in depth. What sets the series apart from the movie is exactly just that. It has more time to really break down the story and explore it in all of its intricacies. The movie really focused on the more technical side of these early space missions. It started in the mid 1940s and then went up to kind of the 1960s. Had a lot of time to play around with. The series really just hones in on the Mercury project and focuses on this kind of time span where this project was in the works and, and it was all kind of happening. When the movie is is more space bound, it's more focused on the kind of the space element of it all. The series is more earthbound and it focuses more on the human stories of the men and women that were involved in these projects. This is the series that really takes its time to kind of break down the way that this instant fame had on these just regular everyday guys and how each of the, the men and the women that were involved in this really were affected by this kind of instant fame. Each episode takes the time to spotlight a specific astronaut and his, his wife and his family and how this fame really affected them. That said, this does make this something different, I think, than what a lot of people are gonna be expecting. A lot of people are gonna be expecting what the movie was, which was this big long focus on the space flight itself. I mean, we don't get to the really meaty parts of this series until really the later episodes. The, 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 most, the main bulk of the series is the lead up to these men going into space. It really is a character piece and it takes its time. It really takes its eight hour time to tell the story. A lot of people are gonna find this, I think maybe boring, maybe a little bit tedious to get through because it is, it is quite slow in the way it tells its story. But I think that this is a pace that is needed to tell this story properly. On the other hand, some of the stuff that is packed into this does feel a little bit superfluous. Um, this is probably this probably would have been better maybe as a six part series instead of an eight part series. Chomp a couple of hours out of it and really kind of just kind of like truncate it just a little bit more. The cast is really fantastic as well. They have kind of chosen a bunch of people who are not incredibly well known, but you probably do know them if you watch a lot of television and a lot of people that you just won't recognize at all. And I think that this was a really great way of casting the series. It was probably a budgetary thing, but I think that also on a more kind of like filmic level, it really helps you with this whole air of these people being, you know, virtually unknowns. And I think it really adds to a more like kind of authentic take on the story. You're able to kind of sink into it and 
and really believe in it a lot more. Now again, this is produced by National Geographic. National Geographic's number one aim is to teach you something, is to give you a history lesson. So don't go into this expecting like a really big, explosive, blockbustery, exciting series. There is a very stark contrast between this and something like the Mandalorian or really any of the other scripted series that Disney Plus have done. This one really is it does feel like a documentary, but told in told as a as a as a as a scripted series. And I think if you go into this with that in mind, you're not gonna be let down because I I feel like a lot of people are going to go into this expecting like a big space epic big space spectacle and it simply isn't that but that's not a bad thing i mean that is a that's a good thing because this is a great story and like the human element of this is amazing me personally i did expect something different going into this i wasn't too sure what to expect from especially from the marketing and stuff that's been given to this but i think i was actually pleasantly surprised i think it's actually a better series than i was expecting even if it is something completely different to what i was expecting this is also a very mature series for disney plus there's a lot of really mature themes in this. There's a lot of sexual references and stuff that I kind of wasn't expecting for something that, that's an exclusive to Disney+. Plus. It almost feels more like something that's probably more in line with like Hulu. So I'm kind of surprised that this did get a Disney Plus release. But I'm actually really happy that it has because it does show that Disney are willing to kind of open their mind and to experiment with the kind of content that they will be putting on Disney+. Plus. That's only really a good thing because that shows us that we're going to get more content like this in the future. And it's the kind of content that people have been really clamoring for this entire time. As someone who really enjoys space movies and the history of space travel and all that kind of stuff, this is a really good series. I really enjoyed this. And at that, I'll be happily rewarding the right stuff with a three and a half out of five. The Right Stuff is a sprawling miniseries that utilizes its eight hour runtime to focus on the human element of its story instead of the more epic space bound elements of the film. Overall, it's a beautifully made series, if not slightly tedious in parts, and is a worthwhile watch for people wanting something a little meatier out of Disney+. With all that said, I know a lot of you out there are going to be asking, where can I watch the original film? Can I watch it on Disney Plus? Unfortunately, you can't see it on Disney Plus. It wasn't made by Disney. It wasn't made by Fox. It's actually a Warner Brothers film. So if you do want to see that movie, you're going to have to head over to the HBO Max streaming service or pick it up on Blu-ray or DVD. It is out there readily available. Uh, thanks once again to my amazing friends over at Disney for providing me with the Right Stuff series ahead of its premiere on Disney Plus for the purposes of this review. And thanks to everybody out there for watching. See you on the next one. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.